I am so happy to unbox my latest Jackery product, the Jackery 300. We'll be talking more about that later. But I really think we too often chase after having these big power units and don't really think enough about how useful the smaller units are for work and for play. But we'll get into that later. Right now, let's actually talk about my big power issue. I'm going to rewind back a little bit and talk a little bit about where my power situation is right now. Um, and I recorded this outside and it was so windy and noisy. I just had to throw that out. And so I'm doing this for the second time today um, just to talk about it. So I did buy a generator. Um, the generator did not work out, long story short. So I bought the generator and basically I had this huge box in my way in the van. Um, and it was annoying. But I was like, okay, I'm going to get a rear rack. Um, I'm going to get like a box big enough to enclose it. I'm going to put a lock on it. I'm going to do all these things. And so like, I was like, okay, so the generator's in my way, but it's only going to be in my way for a short amount of time. And then I'll have a solution of putting it on the rear rack, putting it in the box, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was trying not to spend a huge amount of money on a uh, rear rack um, because I'm trying to focus on getting back into a saving phase and all of that. Um, and some expenses have come up that I didn't expect in, in recent history. Uh, so like I'm working on really getting myself back to a saving phase. Um, and hopefully with the channel growing a lot more than I expected, I'll be able to get back to that. But long story short, I was starting to have really mixed feelings about the generator anyway, but I was able to find a rear rack on Craigslist. So I guess I'm finally going to a Harbor Freight. Um, Mickey's kind of annoyed right now because there's a bunch of junk in his space. There's the cargo rack. Um, and the guy gave me a sweet deal on it. That thing cost me almost nothing. <laughs> and then I have my generator down there. And so I had a rear rack and I put it on my little hitch that was already there and it was super close to the ground. And I already kind of was starting to have really bad feelings about this rear rack, about having stuff like outside of the van on the back of my van, especially when I'm driving and parking around the city, about my van suddenly being longer. Parking spots have varied. Sometimes I totally fit. Sometimes I'm now like a little bigger. I don't want to back up because like I'm more afraid with the rear rack there. Um, and it's just made so many decisions way more awkward. But I had, in addition to the generator, I grabbed a couple of really cheap items that I thought might help supplement my power issues. And those two items are, I bought a Best Tech inverter. Um, I've had this before. It's a 300 watt sine wave inverter. Um, so it's safe for electronics. So if I do want to plug something directly into here, you know, it should be good for sensitive electronics. It was reviewed by Hobotech. Um, I had one in the minivan. I actually bought two while I was in the minivan. And that had to do with the first one getting damaged. It was my fault. Um, I didn't realize it. It was a whole thing. The first one got damaged. It was completely user error. It wasn't anything in the design. I bought another one <laughs> after that one. And this is the third time I've bought this. And as far as actual performance and design haven't had one complain about it but the main reason I bought it um is so that I could charge the Jackery while I was driving now the Jackery does come with its own cable 
and this is the one that came with the Jackery 1000 and I actually am really impressed by the one that came with the Jackery 300 because it seems like a real upgrade on the design it just looks more robust and nicer um, and maybe it's not maybe they just added the little Jackery orange label to it but this one just looks nicer than this one that came with the 1000 which looks kind of generic. It looks like they actually tried with this one. Uh, and I haven't tried it to see if I get any better performance out of it. But the point is, that's the standard way to charge while driving. The thing is, at least for the 1000, I haven't tried it with the Jackery 300. With the Jackery 1000, I maybe got around 50 to 60 watts on the Jackery 1000 while I was driving using the 12 volt plug. But if I use my foot if I use the power brick then I'm getting more like 150 to 160 some watts um, while I'm driving but obviously I don't have a way to plug a 110 plug into the van so what I do is I plug the 300 watt inverter into the van and then I plug this into here turn it on boom and really this and this which i'll explain in a minute have solved a lot of my problems first of all having this means i can recharge my jackery faster and that was the problem i wasn't able if i wasn't getting great sun i was not able to have the jackery keep keep up with the level of depletion i was using per bet per day and this has helped a lot because this basically allows the car to be a generator for the jackery and so when i turn the car off I have more power in the Jackery than I would have if I was just using their plug-in 12 volt system. And this only costs $45, way cheaper than an actual generator. So what's this? This is pretty simple. This is an extension cable that I can add to their portable panels. So obviously everybody is familiar with the Jackery portable panels. Um, this is an eight millimeter cord which is what the jackery uses even though this isn't the solar panel the end of the solar panel is identical to this i just plug it into this end and i have all this extra cable to get the panel out further put it in awkward positions move it from the left side to the right side of the car and still be able to run that cable all the way into the car without moving the jackery 1000 and again i got this before you know, I had the Jackery 300 and I also got some metal um, hooks, some magnetic hooks, not metal, magnetic hooks that I can hook to the side of the van where I could actually hang the solar panel on the side of the van even when I'm parked in the city. And this gives me basically an extension cord to make sure that when I run out of cord from the panel, I still have a bunch of extra cable to reach the Jackery 1000. I'll try to release this and the inverter in the description of this video. The other thing that really helped was honestly, the weather shifted a lot. Um, while in Berkeley and sort of the areas I was in, I did go into Nevada where there was a little bit more real winter as I like to call it. Um, I just wasn't getting great sun conditions. Um, and at first I thought, well, maybe my panels are going bad. Maybe I have my system wired wrong. I had all kinds of thoughts about like why my batteries didn't seem to be able to keep up. And then all of a sudden it was like summer. Today was really windy and not as nice as some of the previous days, but the past couple days I've had, I've had on shorts one day, I had on a t-shirt. I mean, we just had some really nice days and I was able to like, get a lot of energy into the batteries i was maintaining at like 12.8 overnight um mind you the jackery has taken over the fridge and i've not moved the fridge back to the primary agm system um, which is back hooked to, to my primary solar for the moment um and so the change in the weather, the shift in the availability of the solar um, also kind of changed my situation. But even if that hadn't happened, this and this changed the game a lot to the point where I really did not want to deal with a generator. I mean, I am not an anti-generator person. 
I feel like if during the day, during the general hours when people are up and about, in reasonable distance, where like it's a distant sound, you need to run your generator for your RV or van, I am not going to get mad at you. I'm not one of those people. If you are hot and you have the ability to turn on some air conditioning, do you. Um, If you really, really need it for something, for a brief amount of time, and you kick on that generator, or even if you need to charge everything up so that you know you can make it to the through the night without running that generator i am not a person who will personally get mad at you now if you know you're right next to somebody and you don't even ask if it's okay if you can turn on your generator if you turn on your generator in the middle of a parking lot that's just being rude that's not you can be a polite common sense generator owner um i don't think the generator itself or being a generator owner is inherently problematic um and so like I didn't really have any issues in that world (laughs) my issues was it's basically an engine a little portable engine that's generating power it's gonna need a gas can it's gonna need oil it's gonna need maintenance and care you get a lot of power for a really cheap price with a generator. I mean, when you think about what it costs for a generator, even a fairly pricey one, and what it costs for a big enough battery bank and enough solar to run like an air conditioning unit or maybe most microwaves, you are getting into a world of a lot of expense. And a lot of times you can do those things a lot cheaper by having a generator that you turn on every once in a while than trying to build a solar system big enough. But it uses gas and gas smells. And the idea, I had two options, right? I had the rear rack option or like I could clean out the garage, you know, maybe get rid of something. I don't know. And try to store it indoors. If I store it indoors, there's still the problem of the gas can. Do I really want a gas can like in my van with me smelling? No, I spend way too much time in the city where I can't set up and I can't get that out of my van. It would have to always be in my van. Um, And then even after I use it once the generator would always smell like gas so definitely the idea of having a generator like inside my van with me was not appealing and if i put it on the rear rack and this is the same reason why i always wanted a bike that i could store inside instead of outside if i put it on the rear rack now i have to worry about theft prevention um in a much larger way because everything within the doors of the van the van has an alarm So at the very least, if somebody is trying to get in, there's going to be a noise. I'm going to have the opportunity to respond, et cetera, et cetera. As soon as I put something on a rack outside the van, and yes, I know I have a container on the roof, but it's going to be way harder for most people, not everyone, but most people to be able to access my roof. Like it's not something most people can just jump up and do. It's it's fairly difficult. Even with the minivan, um... A very tall person could have just walked up and opened it but I think it's like it's slightly more challenging to have a carrier on the roof and even then I was very careful about what I put up there etc etc um and so if I have something on the back it's very accessible um one I want to kind of hide what it is right so I would have needed some kind of storage container two like I said once I attached that rack to my hitch I realized how low it was you know that ramp that you hit when you're coming out of like a parking lot at a shopping center or a gas station and it's sort of the ramp space in between that area where your car is allowed to go in the regular street well every time I go out of those now I hear the rack sort of scrape on that on that ramp as I'm exiting because of how low it is I had you can buy a hitch raise which will come out of the hitch basically come up and then provide another hitch you know four inches higher two inches higher whatever but then that creates two new problems um one I have to buy something else and two 
Now it's even more in the way of my doors. And I go in and out my back doors pulling stuff out like every single day. Even now with it low, it makes it much harder to access those doors to pull stuff out. And I am back there all the time. Like that is how I pull out my weights for exercise. My bike is buried deep in there. There's just stuff under there that I access and need to use all the time. And suddenly this rear rack is creating this gap of space between me and my back doors and it's not something I can really conveniently stand on and even less so if I start loading it up with stuff so there was literally no appeal in me keeping this generator I didn't even need to get it out of the box and use it and so I ended up returning the generator to Costco it wasn't that pricey I got it with some money on a gift card and then I supplemented the rest out of pocket and basically I just went back and got a refund on it because it was not worth it I would have had to buy more stuff to make it work locking systems a container containment use it or, or some kind of cover I would have needed to get a hitch lift and then I would have had all that stuff in the way when I was trying to access the back of my van to pull stuff from my underbed garage so basically it wasn't going to work um, and I am very comfortable in my decision. I have not decided what I'm going to do with the rack in the back yet. Ideally, I'd like to find somebody who's looking for one who's local, who I can literally hand it off to. Um, I don't have a local, a lot of, I, I don't have a big local, like, van life connection in that way. Um, so I don't know who would want it because uh, I would just honestly give it to him. It didn't cost me that much. I mean, it was it was so cheap um, and it's used. So it's not like, honestly, I just want to get rid of it <laughs> at this point because it's not going to work out. And the generator is gone. The plug-in inverter is working out great. And then, of course, the big bonus is now I also have the Jackery 300. And I own this Jackery 300 thanks to the channel's first ever sponsor, Jackery. I've been using the Jackery 1000 for a while now, and I have not yet had a day where I was unimpressed with it. I have found the Jackery 1000 to be entirely capable of running my whole van when it's wired to my roof solar panels. But I am so excited about having the smaller Jackery to carry around. While the Jackery 1000 is very portable considering its size, it's much easier to carry around additional items with a smaller unit in your hand. By the way, I would suggest if you are going to run a Jackery as your set house system, hook it up to the mounted panels. That way, it's always getting a charge from somewhere. By purchasing the Best Tech 300 watt inverter, I was able to get a really good charge while driving as well. But this new Jackery 300 is my out to play system. I can take it outdoors to work on my laptop, charge drone batteries, charge my cell phone or tablet. And isn't the point of a mobile lifestyle to live out of your van, not in it? So while my Jackery 1000 is performing like a beast within the doors of my van, and it could easily be used outdoors, the smaller Jackery is much more suited for going outside of the van for playtime in a gorgeous locale. The Jackery systems are all truly plug and play and super easy to use. Honestly, even hooking it to a roof solar panel system isn't complex. You just gotta get one cable, an eight millimeter to MC4 connector. And your Jackery will be hooked to sun whenever the sun is out. No need to bother with putting out a portable panel every day. Unless you prefer the portable panel lifestyle and would rather position your panels for ideal sun. But what is awesome about the Jackery's portable panel, the Solar Saga, is it can be set up away from the van for a bit and it's built for the best compatibility with the Jackery. It's super easy to use Jackery's panels. Just open them up, set them up, and plug them in. You can even charge a cell phone directly from the panel. While a Jackery isn't gonna run most microwaves or AC units, it has tons of other uses in your basic day-to-day. -day. And the thing that continues to impress me about Jackery is how customers praise their customer service. 
there are certainly other companies out there with all-in-one solar charging units, double and even triple the capacity of the largest Jackery, but the customer service reviews for most of them seem mixed at best. The Jackery has a 24-month warranty that they stand by, meaning for the next two years, if anything is going wrong with your unit, you can just reach out to them. And if you register your product, you even get an extra 12 months. On January 18th, Jackery dropped the price of their entry-level units, the Jackery 240 and 300, on both Amazon.com and Amazon.ca. The Jackery 240 and 300 are the perfect choice for those who would like to charge their low power devices while enjoying the outdoors. I really feel like with the Jackery 1000 and the Jackery 300, I kind of have the best of both worlds. A unit big enough to run my camper van and a unit small enough to go on an adventure. So with that, I'll see you in the next video. So I'm sure now that I've done a sponsored video, all of your fingers are moving to unsubscribe. <laughs> but I really do like the Jackery units, and I hope you know I wouldn't just do something for the payout. Like, I've used their product for a while, and I actually love the product. I think it's performed tremendously. I've bought cheap power stations or power stations with bad customer support, and I feel like Jackery supports their product, and the product is good. But the argument about what's affordable, what works for you, what feels overpriced when there are other options in this category, honestly, all of that is up to you. This is a truly honest opinion on a Jackery Pot product. So now for the last little things, just to remind you, because basically... I work in service of the YouTube algorithm. There's a subscribe button below this video if you think you might be interested in future content. There's a thumbs up and thumbs down if you want to give me some feedback on this content. And if you want to write out a verbal feedback to the content, well, you can type that below. All those things give me the information I need to continue to try to make the channel better as I move forward.